We are very familiar with rescues and humane societies that bring in their dogs, cats, sometimes rabbits and more. But what about birds? That's where Albatross Aviary comes in, committed to rescuing, rehabbing and conserving birds in our community. Jaron Tremble is here with Tuscany, a green wing macaw, to talk more about your mission. Jaron, thank you so much for being here. Hi, and you. Tuscany, thanks for being here as well. Say hi and shake, shake, shake. No? Okay. <laughs> a little camera shy. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Jaron, talk to us about the history of this organization. This is all done by you. Yeah. Um, so, in 2015, I started this when I came across the crisis of unwanted birds in the Midwest. And I was in a position where I just kind of took it on. I took it upon myself to help address that problem um, where birds are the number three most popular pet but the number one most surrendered. Um, they live 60 to 80 years so they bounce around from house to house and much like children that bounce around in the foster system they come with a lot of baggage so most of the birds that we take in come in with uh, their abused, abandoned or neglected with issues like aggression and self-mutilation and antisocial behaviors so I work with child developmental trauma techniques to rehabilitate them so that we got really nice ladies like this I know. Oh. that's my good girl I know thank you thank you am I talking to people again and not you <laughs> I love you. So how big of a crisis is this? I, I did not know that it's number three pet, number one, and then... And that yeah, they're... it's a pretty big crisis um, yeah. as far as, unfortunately, we don't hear a lot about it because birds actually are pretty adaptable. They're really smart and intelligent. So when we take them and put them into a house, they can survive for a while. But things like Teflon pans and dietary needs and stuff, that their life expectancy is pretty short. And the community, unfortunately, much like when you start getting into um, child developmental mental needs community or disabled community, the online community is really shamey. So when we get a lot of people that are asking for help that weren't educated and just bought a bird from a pet store, they actually have a hard time asking for help. And so what we're trying to do is educate people that want to get into birds or, want, or have an interest in them to help support people and create a community that actually addresses the problem so that people don't feel like they have to hide any issues that they have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, education is obviously key because you want to be able to keep these birds in their homes because you're you're bringing birds in. I can't take them all. I was going to say, <laughs> right? And, and you don't really adopt them out either. No. Talk to us about, you know, your so, mission is education and, yes. and keeping them in their so homes. So we've got, we've, our adoption policy is a lot different than most rescues. Yeah. Um, a lot of rescues, they're... Um, their financial structure is set up on adoption policies that you get in cat and dog rescues, but with cat and dogs being domesticated animals, it's super easy to do. With most of these guys, most of them are only like one or two generations out from being wild animals. So you're taking a wild animal into your house. They're just incredibly adaptable. Um, and so we don't actually adopt out to the public. You have to come in for a six month training program. And actually, once you go through our training program, you don't pick the bird, the bird gets to pick you. Um, you can kind of suggest, but mostly it's if you bond with a bird and you get along with it, it's about creating a companionship because birds don't make great pets, but they make fantastic companions. Oh my gosh, I love that. And, and so that's obviously one thing about birds. I want to know what else you love about birds. Why, what makes them special? Oh, companions? they're so smart. <laughs> um, they're, they are, they're like children. Um, they're, I love birds just because they, their communication structure, they come from such highly complex social um, flocks that they, they want to communicate and they want to um, tell you about their day too. And it's funny because like there's a few birds that'll yell until you come look at them like, look what I'm doing like a child does, but sure. they're chewing on a tree branch. And you're <laughs> like, um, and it's the same thing where I love watching it because for me, it, it forces me during the day to calm down and, and enjoy and do well, I do observational research, but just to kind of take in the day and enjoy the natural beauty of, of life. I love it. I love it. So you have been doing all of this. You need volunteers. You need yes. a little help. Um, we need community yeah. support really bad right now. Um, so we're looking for hopefully some, some holiday donations, some end of the year funding. Sure. Because um, we're actually really strapped and we're actually looking at some financial crisis right now. Um, and then as far as volunteers go, we, we need some dedicated people to come in and help doing general cleaning and maintenance so that I can actually work with the birds. Because right now, <laughs> Most of my time's cleaning poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, perfect. So, as far as volunteers, what, what are you looking for? Who should who who's a good fit for you for a volunteer? Um, people that are looking to invest their time 
on a regular basis because that's the one thing when you're dealing with these guys especially because they're not domesticated you're kind of looking at the same structure as you would with developing a relationship with a wild bird outside that there's a lot of time and patience that come with just being inside of the aviary and cleaning up their environment as much as they are super smart they might not actually understand what you're coming in there for so but if you come in um, like six hours a week if you come in spend time making their environment better they just start associating you with a better environment and start liking you and that's how you kind of develop a relationship with the bird um, and a lot of people don't quite understand that I do get a lot of people that come in and like stare at birds and like oh I want to I want to cuddle it and I'm like <laughs> Hang on there, Lanny and George. <laughs> um, but a lot of that is like predatory behavior. Cats yeah. stare at birds before they're going to attack. If you sit there and focus on a bird, they get nervous. They get right. a little, and so. Okay. Um, well, let's quickly talk about yeah. the event you have coming up, too, if people yes. want to learn more. We are having a Christmas-themed holiday event at the uh, Flamingo Lounge, affectionately known as the Dirty Bird. It's actually right <laughs> across the street from us. So okay. we're hosting uh, a holiday event there. We've got Wolf Bite, and I think Jesse Ray might be on, and there's a few other people. I'm not positive on the band lineup, so I probably shouldn't say that out loud right now. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> but, but we're birds there? Yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to host it. It's going to be a rocking time. Um, we're going to, the music is going to start after 7. We're going to do uh, a gathering from 3 to, I, I think, like 6.30, and then I'll do a little presentation, maybe show some birds, and Perfect. then, yeah. And so, so everyone can learn more. Everyone show up, support your local rescue, and hopefully we can keep going and continue our mission. Absolutely. Well, Jaron Tuscany, thank you so much for your time. You want to learn more, albatrossavery.com. There's the information about the event coming up December 15th, $10. We'll be right back.